In the moment, I feel America standing as one, putting differences aside and taking a deep collective breath. We pay tribute to something far bigger and more important than any one of us. And I truly feel like one of us, one of we, the people, and the echoes of the president's and others' speeches. I embrace America in a way I never had or thought I could, feeling for the first time that I belong, truly belong to one country, not an imaginary ideal from TV or a nostalgic Cuba floating in the sea of my parents' memories, but a real tangible place that is mine, was mine, all along. Senator Schumer introduces me and calls me up to the podium. My mother squeezes my shoulder. I stand more confident than I imagined I would or could be, transfixed by the moment that is no longer about me or my poem or my glory, but about our country. Still, I'm surprised when the president and vice president stand up to greet me and shake my hand on the way to the podium. They both whisper something in my ear that I can't make out, but their gracious gestures speak silently to my heart as a saying, Richard, here is your country. This is your story. You are home. I step up to the podium, look out over the crowd, a patchwork quilt of lives of stories spread across our ground under our sky beneath our one sun. I take it all in as I take one deep breath and then another. This is for them. This is for us. For all of us. I think to myself and begin speaking into our wind. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, one today. One sun rose on us today, kindled over our shores, peeking over the Smokies, greeting the faces of the Great Lakes, spreading a simple truth across the Great Plains, then charging over the Rockies. One light, waking up rooftops, under each one a story, told by our silent gestures moving behind our windows. My face, your face, Millions of faces in morning's mirrors, each one yawning to life, crescendoing into our day. Pencil yellow school buses, the rhythm of traffic lights, fruit stands, apples, limes, and oranges, arrayed like rainbows, begging our praise. Silver trucks heavy with oil or paper, bricks or milk, teeming over highways alongside us, on our way, to clean tables, read ledgers, or save lives, to teach geometry or ring up groceries as my mother did for 20 years so I could write this poem for us today. All of us, as vital as the one light we move through. The same light on blackboards with lessons for the day, equations to solve, history to question, or atoms imagined. They have a dream. We keep dreaming, or the impossible vocabulary of sorrow that won't explain the empty deaths of 20 children marked absent today and forever. Many prayers, but one light, breathing color into stained glass windows, life into the faces of bronze statues, warmth onto the steps of our museums and park benches as mothers watch their children slide into the day. One ground, our ground, rooting us to every stalk of corn, every head of wheat sown by sweat and hands, hands gleaning coal or planting windmills in deserts and hilltops that keep us warm. Hands digging trenches, hands rotting pipes and cables, hands as worn as my father's, cutting sugarcane so my brother and I could have books and shoes. The dust of our farms and deserts, our cities and plains mingled by one wind, 
our breath. Breathe. Hear it. Through the day's gorgeous din of honking cabs, buses launching down avenues, the symphony of footsteps, guitars, and screeching subways, the unexpected songbird on your clothesline. Here, squeaky playground swings, trains whistling or whispers across cafe tables. Here, the doors we open for each other all day, saying, hello, shalom. Buongiorno, howdy, namaste, or buenos dias. In the language my mother taught me, in every language spoken into one wind, carrying our lives without prejudice as these words break from my lips. One sky, since the Appalachians and Sierras claim their majesty and the Mississippi and Colorado work their way to the sea, Thank the work of our hands, weaving steel into bridges, finishing one more report for the boss on time, stitching another wound or uniform, the first brush stroke on a portrait or the last floor in the Freedom Tower, jutting into a sky that yields to our resilience. One sky toward which we sometimes lift our eyes, tired from work. Some days guessing at the weather of our lives. Some days giving thanks for love that loves you back. Sometimes praising a mother who knew how to give or forgiving a father who couldn't give what you wanted. Still, we head home through the gloss of rain or the weight of snow or the plum blush of dusk. But always, always home, always under one sky, our sky, and always one moon. Like a silent drum tapping on every rooftop and every window of one country, all of us facing the stars and hope. A new constellation still waiting for us to map it, still waiting for us to name it together.